Hi all, and welcome to this Better Your Chess video. It is time to do another opening trap video. Inspired by Natalia Zhukova's win over Taki Harari from the recently held Isle of Man tournament, in which Zhukova used a very nasty trap, I have decided to take a look at that game and investigate the opening trap a bit more. So Harari plays with white and Zhukova plays with black. The game went e4, e6, d4, d5, we have a French defense, and now after e5 we already have the advanced variation of the French, which normally is combated by c5, as played in the game. The game continues with c3, knight c6, regular theory moves, and now after knight f3, bishop d7. This is already an interesting move. Now, of course, black has different ways of combating the advanced variation, but I've never really paid attention to this particular combination of knight c6 on the fourth move and bishop d7 on the fifth. It is certainly is interesting. Now, of course, queen b6 on the fifth move is really uh, the main line. But the, main, uh, the game continued here with a3, and now f6, another very interesting move. And it seems that black is trying some sort of a hybrid setup against the advanced variation here. So he's trying to combine, let's say, pressure on the center from the left-hand side with pressure on the center from the right-hand side. So this move puts pressure on the e5 pawn in particular, but it also weakens the light square diagonals b1 to h7 and also h5 to e8. And as we shall see later on, this is really quite significant. White now continued with bishop d3 immediately pouncing on those light square diagonals. And now queen b6 was played. Actually, this move leads to the so-called milner berry gambit, but with the inclusion of the moves a3 and f6. Now, let me quick you sh quickly show you the proper move order of that gambit. And therefore, we have to go back to the main line after 5, queen b6. Now, bishop d3 leads to this Milner Berry gambit. And normally, uh, play continues with an exchange of the pawns on d4. And now, of course, not the very well known blunder knight takes d4 because, as it turns out, white's d-pawn is indirectly defended. White can take this knight, and black is not able to recapture it, because here is the very well-known discovered attack on both king and queen. Now, you've probably seen this trap explained a hundred times if you're a frequent visitor or watcher of uh, chess videos on YouTube. But that's not really the point I want to make. Instead of taking on d4 here with the knight, theory recommends that black should first, of course, play bishop d7, already blocking the bishop d5 check in advance. And now black threatens to safely capture the pawn on d4. But then why is the milner berry opening called a gambit? Well, normally here, White just simply surrenders that pawn on d4 with castles. And now after knight takes d4, which is safe, knight takes d4, queen d4, there is no bishop d5 check. And play normally continues with knight c3, a6, and queen e2. And White has compensation for the sacrificed pawn in this position. Okay, let us now return to the game and see where the differences lie. So we go back to queen b6 where we have the milner berry gambit with the inclusion of these a3 and f6 moves. So in the game, white continues now with b4, resolving the weakness of b2, preparing to develop the bishop from c1, and also trying to clarify the tension in the center. Black reacted with c takes d4, fixing now this weakness on d4, and after rook c8, yeah, you see, 
um, because of the fact that in comparison to the proper Mulder Berry Gambit, as I just showed you, now also this diagonal is open, uh, black can still not safely take on d4 after all. Because if instead of rook c8, black would be a greedy again and takes the pawn, now the check will come from the other side. Bishop g6 check. It's the same type of trap and it's a discovered attack on, of course, the king and the queen again. So after uh, black has moved the king away or has taken the bishop, obviously white will win the queen once more. Ah, so that explains why black did not play knight takes d4 and rather opted for a, a regular development move with rook c8. So everything is safe and white can just go ahead with the finishing development. And in the game, castle's kingside was played. Okay, I will now try and crawl into the head of a possible white player. I want to stress that this is not necessarily how Harari thought, probably more how I as a white player would deal with the situation. Now black played in the game, knight takes d4. What? Knight takes d4? Black takes the pawn after all, what's going on here? Black thinks that she has defended against the check with bishop d7 and can safely take on d4. But she has missed that the check will come from the other side. Oh my dear, she has just blundered a piece. Let's check. Yes, knight takes, queen takes, bishop g6 check, h takes g6 and queen takes queen. Well, that's a very good start to my tournament. Let's take that knight. Knight takes d4. But now black sprung a very nasty surprise on white and played here rook c1. Oh my dear, what's this? She does not recapture on d4? I completely missed this move. Oh, I hate it that I can be so naive sometimes. And this is not the first time that I underestimate my opponent. Of course she was not going to blunder. Oh, this is demoralizing. Well, let's try to make the best of this. But wait, there is queen h5. Wow, I'm winning after all. Black strap does not work and she's trying to make the best of it with the exchange sacrifice on c1. And after the check on h5, she can also not answer with g6 because bishop takes g6, h takes g6, and both black rooks will be hanging. Boom! Queen h5 check. g6, what? g6 after all? Oh dear. If I now take on g6, h takes g6, queen takes h8. There will follow rook takes f1 check king takes f1 and queen takes d4 i'm just lost in this position <gasps> oh my god no maybe i i shouldn't take the rook in the corner i should go with the, for the check of course i should go for the check yes king e7 rook takes c1 wait black has queen takes d4 already five pieces against four and then super center my rook in the corner is hanging. Wait, knight c3, queen e5. Oh, again, I'm just lost. Of course, I should have calculated better and realized I should not be able to take both rooks at the same time. Oh, I'm such a bad sir. Oh, my gosh. Well, back to the game after g6. Well, let's try and hang on with this move then. Queen h4. But now it was really rather simple for Shukova in the game to get a real serious advantage and not let go anymore. She exchanged rooks here on f1. Bishop takes f1. F takes e5, hitting the knight. Knight f3. Bishop g7, very nicely consolidating and developing at the same time. And after a few more moves, rook a2, knight e7, knight bd2 e4 hitting the f3 knight knight g5 knight f5 hitting the queen queen h3 h6 and trapping the knight g5 knight white simply resigned 
bar. Okay. Now let's return to the position after knight takes d4 because there's a little bit more to tell you. So here we go. This is the position after knight takes d4. Well, it turns out that um, sorry, yeah, it turns out that again, if if white now goes for it, accepts the opening trap, and black does play rook takes c1, then indeed black is better also after queen takes c1, queen d4. Queen c3, covering both the rook and the pawn, an exchange of queens, and now the recapture on e5. Black is just better here, he has the pair of the bishops, he is also two pawns up uh, for the exchange, has a very nice center, and all the chances to play for the win here. So instead of queen h5, which was losing outright, by the way, also this queen takes c1 would not really have worked even though it was clearly a better fighting chance for white. Now instead of even accepting the trap after knight takes d4 with knight takes d4, it turns out that now bishop e3 is clearly the best move. Just pinning the knight and threatening to take the knight again, but now with more control of d4. Fortunately for black, there is knight takes f3 check, queen takes f3, and now black must save the queen with such a move as queen c7. But after bishop d4 and f5, queen e3, white again has this typical milner berry type of compensation, and probably even more. So, yeah, this may prompt black to use only this hybrid move order with bishop d7 and f6 uh, occasionally and return to the main lines if he or she wants to play more solidly. Um, yeah, just to be completely, uh, to be completely complete, you may wonder why after bishop d4 not f5, I forgot to mention that here f takes e5 doesn't work because of a similar uh, check on h5 and now after g6, which is a mistake, queen e5 simply just wins the rook in the corner. Okay, well, a very interesting trap nonetheless, even though white will be able to completely sidestep the consequences with bishop e3 instead of accepting, taking this knight on d4. Well, that's it for this video. Please subscribe, like and comment. That will help me to keep this channel going and head over to petriorchest.com if you want to uh, replay the moves. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.